The tutorial you're about to watch is from the Lightroom Organization and Workflow Workshop, which is part of the SR Lounge Lightroom Workshop Collection. This workshop on DVD starts from the ground up with Lightroom file management, organization, and helps photographers to master a full professional post-production workflow. The workshop includes over 70 high-definition videos, and it totals nearly eight hours of uninterrupted education. Also included are 70 raw image exercise files and our workflow guide and checklist. Designed for Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5 users, you can learn more or purchase this workshop from the SR Lounge store by clicking the link below in the description. Let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we're gonna take a brief moment to walk through the production workflow while giving you some best practice tips along the way. Remember that while shooting a good workflow, it begins with pre-production and with production. We're gonna get into the specific tips later, but for now, just keep in mind that an efficient workflow begins with the image capture process and with the planning process that begins even before capture. After we capture our images, we have a few options when it comes to importing. Number one, we can import by copying our memory cards directly to the hard drive and then manually importing those images into Lightroom. Option number two is to use Lightroom to import the photos directly from the memory card or say directly from the camera. Or option number three is to set up an auto import folder. And basically any images that are placed within that folder are gonna be automatically imported into Lightroom. We're gonna teach you how to set up that watch folder for auto importing later, but for now, I wanna give you a recommendation that you stick to option number two, which is to use Lightroom to import directly from your memory card. And the reason for this is very simple. When we transfer images within the operating system, the operating system is not sophisticated enough or it's not designed to basically to help us manage the images. Meaning that if an image has an identical file name as another image, even if these images are unique, the file system, your operating system is gonna treat them as the same image. Meaning that one is gonna be overwritten or basically replaced by another. For a studio like ours, many of our photographers are shooting with the same camera make and model and they don't have custom file naming. This means that we frequently run into images that are unique images coming from different cameras but have the same file name. Allowing Lightroom to control the import process will automatically take care of these duplicate images or basically unique images with identical names, ensuring that all images that should be imported are imported, even if they have the same file name from different cameras. Lightroom is also gonna prevent duplicate images from being imported as well. Now, once our images are imported, we're left to cull and sort through our images, and we're gonna show you the specifics on that workflow later on the DVD. But for now, let me just give you two tips. And the first is that we want to do all of our culling from within the library module. It doesn't matter the, the view that you're using. Basically, if you prefer to cull in the grid view or in the loop view within the library module, that's totally fine. What matters is that you aren't culling in the develop module as many people do. The develop module uses a completely different type of image preview than the library module. Hence, culling in the develop module will immediately slow down your culling process as Lightroom has to build develop previews from image to image. The second culling tip that we have for you is to keep your culling system simple. Ditch complex rating systems and stick to something that's easy. Keep an image or not keep an image. Nothing is gonna slow down your culling process like trying to figure out whether an image basically fits into say six different possible rating categories. If it's a one star, do this. If it's a five star, do this. If it's three stars, do this. We wanna simplify the culling process into either pick or not pick. That way we only have one basic decision when we see an image. Once we've narrowed down our final selection of images, then the next step in our workflow is to process these images within the develop module. The main workflow tip that I can provide you here is to master every method of batch processing from using the previous button to synchronizing to auto sync to more batch processing functions. And batch processing is gonna be your greatest ally in processing large amounts of images in an efficient manner. Once again, a big part of whether batch processing is gonna go smoothly depends on how the images were captured, which is why we mentioned earlier that pre-production and in production, these are the first stages of an efficient workflow. If you have consistent exposures, meaning that if you're shooting in manual on your camera and everything looks consistent from scene to scene, well, batch processing is gonna be simple, it's gonna be efficient because you can apply one effect over every single image within an entire scene. Once our standard batch processing is completed, then we should be left with basically our beautiful images. These are images with great color, great contrast. They've been processed, they look awesome. And at this point, we wanna decide what we want to do with additional advanced production or if we need to take specific images into Photoshop for additional work. 
Now my advice here is to avoid any and all advanced production and Photoshop work until you've completely finished your batch processing pass. So basically we're doing another pass at the end to do our advanced processing. The reason for this is to avoid rework and loss in efficiency. If you're constantly stopping to basically do advanced production on an image, then you're not going to be able to take full advantage of a batch processing workflow. In addition, advanced editing during batch processing is basically going to cause a lot of rework because later on in your catalog, later on in your shoot, you might come across images that would be better suited for additional processing. And this means that once you see those images, you're going to say, oh, that original image wasn't that great. I'm actually going to reprocess and do this one instead. So we always save the additional advanced processing for that third final pass in the production workflow. At this point in the workflow, we've done three passes. We've done our culling pass, our basic production pass, and now our advanced pass. We spent all this time finishing our images and now it's time to export them to a final usable product. During the export process, I recommend that you export your finished images to any format that you might possibly need in the future all at one time. And here's what I mean. If you plan on say using images for print and you also want to use them for the blog, so you need some that are stamped because you want them for web use. Let's say that you also want some for slideshow use. Export all the images in the three or four different formats for both print, slideshow, and web all at once. Exported images take up far less space than the original RAW files and web size exports, well, they hardly take up any space at all. So it's much more efficient from a workflow standpoint to take the little extra space or to use up that extra space for all of these export formats rather than having to basically re-enter a catalog just because you need to get a certain image out to a certain format. Lastly, after exporting is completed, we prepare our catalog and images for archival. And this is where I would encourage you all not to be a photographer pack rat. Photographers, we all have a tendency to keep every single photo that we ever shoot because we're in love with them. They're kind of our babies. And even if we have 20 photos of the exact same thing, we keep them all. Now, of course, don't delete images that could be of use in the future. But if you have rejected images that are basically duplicates or they're simply not as good as the images that you've picked and kept and produced, don't feel shy when it comes to deleting them completely from your hard drive. To be extra safe when it comes to our professional shoots, when we're shooting for clients, our rejected images, we actually just basically reset all the settings for those and we export them as JPEG files just in case we need them in the future. And sometimes a client might ask, do you have any more shots of grandma? Do you have any more shots in this one particular situation? Even though they might not be the best, they still want them. So as JPEGs, we can still use those images if needed. Well, they only take up a fraction of the space than when compared to the raw file. We're going to spend much more time on each of these points throughout this workshop, but for now, I just wanted you all to have a good idea of the overall post-production workflow within Lightroom. So great job. Let's head on now to the next video.